Have you ever seen water striders skidding across a pond? How are they able to walk on water? They can do this by using the surface tension of water and their long hydrophobic legs. To understand, we must first take a closer look at the physical properties of water. Once upon a time, there were two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The atoms started to share electrons and thus formed a water molecule. However, this sharing was not equal as the oxygen atom pulled electrons away from the hydrogen atom. This created a partial negative charge around the oxygen and a partial positive charge around the hydrogen. Like magnets, the negative end of the water molecule attracts the positive end of another water molecule. This attraction is called a hydrogen bond. On the pond surface, water molecules are unable to form hydrogen bonds with the air. Instead, they form hydrogen bonds with neighboring water molecules, giving the surface elastic-like properties. This phenomenon is known as surface tension. If an object is light enough, the surface tension of water can support its weight. When the strider steps on water, the surface forms a small dimple around its feet. Yet insects that are lighter than the strider will still break the surface tension if they try to walk on water. Does the strider have a trick up its sleeve? Under the microscope, the strider is covered in thousands of waxy hairs called microceti. These waxy hairs repel water by preventing hydrogen bond formation between the water molecules and the strider's feet. This water-repelling property is called hydrophobicity. Hydrophobicity further prevents the strider's feet from breaking the water surface. The water strider's superhydrophobic feet allow it to utilize water tension and glide across the water, where other insects sink and struggle to get back on land.